This is a 69-year-old gentleman who um, was transferred from another hospital. Uh, he just landed in Sydney two days ago with severe back pain, chest pain, and um, left shoulder tip pain. Uh, he also developed hoarseness of voice uh, in the last two days. Had a CT scan, as you can see, there's a huge uh, thoracic aortic aneurysm arising from the aortic arch. It measures about 10 centimeters in diameter, pushing uh, against the back of the sternum. Um, and also the aortic aneurysm has pushed the ascending aorta into the right chest, and distal uh, aortic arch is dissected. We're following the scan downwards, and the aneurysm is very tortuous. And um, over here, in the distal descending, the caliber of the uh, uh, descending aorta is about 3.7, 3.8 centimeters in diameter. That is a very tortuous course. And then here, distal in the abdominal aorta, you can see the true and false movement. It's impossible to tell which one is true, which one is false. And uh, certainly there is a chronicity about this um, um, mega aorta. But the fact that he presented with chest pain for two days and also he has um, developed the, uh, the hoarseness of voice um, suggests that his aneurysm is expanding um, and it's quite likely it's going to rupture if we don't intervene on this. Now, how do we repair this? The first step is to um, establish an extra anatomical bypass. Uh, our vascular surgeon, Dr. Rafi Kosabian, is going to perform a carotid, carotid subclavian bypass and uh, ligate the base of the left common carotid artery. The second part of the operation is to replace this patient's uh, leaking aortic valve. He's got aortic regurgitation, moderate regurgitation. It's impossible to do a circulatory arrest with a leaky valve. We're going to replace the aortic valve with a tissue valve. And then we're going to perform a thoracotomy incision. So he's going to have a sternotomy and also thoracotomy to expose this uh, aortic aneurysm from proximal end, which is mid-arch, to distally in a descending aorta. Under a brief period of circulatory arrest, which I'm hoping to clamp the, the neck just distal to the subclavian artery. And any reason so big, it will be difficult to put a cross clamp on without circulatory arrest. And distally, I'll clamp the um, descending aorta just beyond the aneurysm with a separate perfusion cannula to perfuse the, the visceral organs. This will isolate the proximal descending distal arch, this segment of the uh, aortic aneurysm. Once we resect the aneurysm, I'll put a uh, interposition graft from the mid arch, this is zone one level, and down to the distal descending, meanwhile ligating the, um, the left subclavian artery from inside of the aneurysm. And hopefully we'll uh, get this patient out of immediate trouble. Um, he's quite stable. Um, and uh, our vascular surgeon is going to do a carotid, carotid subclavian bypass at stage one. And it will come back to you after they've performed the extra anatomical bypass. Dr. Rafi Kosavian here is exposing the left common carotid artery and also the uh, left subclavian artery. He's going to do a um, carotid, carotid subclavian bypass and ligate the base of the uh, uh, left common carotid artery so everything will be supplied um, from the innominate on the right hand side. So this sling is on the phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerve was divided, dissected off the scalenus anterior muscle and once the scalenus anterior muscle was divided the subclavian artery up here, which is just here, you can see here. And to get to all of this, there's this is covered with a fat pad called the scalene fat pad, and that was uh, 
dissected uh, laterally. So we're now ready to do our anastomosis onto the left subclavian artery. Left common carotid, now I've just got to expose the right common carotid, so I'll swap places. Through a very small incision in the base of the right neck, over the uh, division of the heads of the sternomastoid into the um, clavicular and the sternal part, we've come onto the internal jugular vein, which is here, and we've divided a couple of tributaries to be able to retract it laterally and posteriorly. And once we've done that, we have pretty good access then to the carotid artery, which you can just see coming into view now. It's just here. The carotid artery is coming into view. And the thing we have to keep in mind, of course, once we're in the carotid sheath is the vagus nerve, which we haven't seen, but I'm keeping my mind on it and keeping an eye out for it. Okay, so there's the carotid artery. How much heparin do you give for this? Well, we give the standard uh, 100 units per kilo or 5,000 units usually. Yeah. Yep. A homeopathic dose compared to you guys. So you're trying to tunnel through. Yeah. What's the plane that you're trying to So the plane through? is between the strap muscles and the thyroid. I'm trying to avoid going through trachea and through thyroid. No diaphragm. Thank you. Well, what sort of graft are you going to use? Here? I'm going to use a polytetrafluoroethylene ring reinforced 8mm graft. Okay, can I have the nylon tape now? Thank you which is also embedded with heparin, so it's pro patent graft. Just gently close that and then pull it gently towards you. And just get that closed. Thank you. Good, so we've now got the tunnel. You can give heparin now, thank you, 5,000 units. So the scalenus anterior was here and we've I've divided the scalenus anterior to expose the subclavian artery, sucker. But to, before doing that, we have to uh, find the phrenic nerve, which usually runs on the front of scalenus anterior from left to right. And you can see this is the phrenic nerve here, which we've slung. Okay. So given heparin, are you going to do an enterside? I'm going to do an enterside here. Yep. Yeah. And then an enterside, I'm going to divide the common carotid and then do an enterside of the common carotid onto the graft. Okay. A stretch PTSE graft, which is uh, ring reinforced and embedded, impregnated with heparin. Work it out so that we can have the anastomosis and the uh, left common carotid anastomosis here in the non ringed area. So, but you want the rings in the tunnel. But I do want the rings in the tunnel, that's right. Artery is very soft. It's very friable. The the intima is just very. It's coming away very easily from the underlying layers. Rafi, you finished the uh, the Finish bypass. Right yeah. Yes. You're done. happy with that? Yeah, it's all gone very well. Good. Um, just gone as planned. Yeah.